Hello, Drew Pritchards. Drew Pritchard's salvage business is all about buying and selling. To turn a profit, Drew has to make instant calculations about whether any one item is worth the costs involved. A big part of my job, in fact, my only job, is I'm the buyer for the business. So I very much work on uh, an instant gut reaction. The second I see something, I know whether I want it or not. And also in that second, I have to work out restoration costs, transport, what I can pay for it, have I got a customer, and what I can get for it in the end. Um, it really is the essence of what we do. All of Drew's skills will be put to the test on his first call out to a new contact who's involved with the music business. And T has put a lot of thought into the visit. It's, uh, I've been thinking about antique dealers' favourite musicians. Right. Uh, I've got George and Michael. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Patina Turner. <laughs> That's very good. And Arts and Craftwork. That is, you have outdone yourself today. I have, That's yeah. very good. And anything by Bauhaus. <laughs> <laughs> They're on a three hour drive from Conwy to the tiny village of Elmore, near the city of Gloucester. We are off to see a guy called Amsel. He used to organize raves and festivals. And he has inherited a house that's been in the family since the 1200s. So that's quite, quite a long well, time, yeah. yeah. This is Elmore Court. I've lived here for six years. Uh, first two years, I kind of enjoyed it, then realised it was losing loads of money, and now we're undergoing a major refurbishment to open as a wedding and events venue later on in the year. And my family have been here for eons, and there's quite a lot of pressure on me to not cock it up. The house has an incredible assortment of antique furniture, but at this stage of the refurbishments, will any of it be for sale? Drew's here a little bit earlier than um, is ideal, really. I'm kind of nervous about selling anything now, unless I'm absolutely sure we're not going to use it. I think this is our man waiting in the front here yeah. by the scaffold. <laughs> I said, don't knock the scaffold over. <laughs> don't run the owner of the house over, no. will you? <laughs> difficult to do deal with. <laughs> Hello. As Drew. How you doing? Welcome. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Wonderful. You all right? You too? Hello. How are you? How are you? you yeah, good to see you, yeah. Welcome. Fab house. It is great. Yeah, it's, um, it's a lovely house. It's a beautiful house, isn't it? Yeah. Really, really elegant really. as you come up. It's, Wonderful. It's great. Because aren't you building some amazing party room as well? <laughs> yeah, we're building a, um, building a completely soundproofed, um, sustainably built building out of rammed earth and all our estate timber. And, yeah. that, isn't um, that amazing? Great idea. And the idea is, is that none of the neighbours can ever hear what we're up to. That's Which always is good always a good thing. <laughs> Should we go and have a look? Yeah, let's have a look. I'll take you through to the hall. Okay. okay. Right, so... Uh, wow. This is the hall. Which is quite like nice. It. Like yeah. it. <laughs> Fantastic. What a place. Kind of a workshop for furniture, then. <laughs> Amazing. God, I'm just drooling at half the furniture in here as well. I mean, this sort of thing, obviously, I mean, you know, it's never... You know, I... Uh... That was covered in dust. Drew would buy it off you now. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, no, we, we, we shot, polish it up specially for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. <laughs> but I have to be honest, I know, surrounded by all this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful furniture, and I keep getting drawn to, the, to these, to be honest with you, in the chair over there. One of my obsessions is uh, chairs. We managed to find one real beauty. It's not the most valuable chair in the world at all, but it's incredibly elegant and the proportions are knockout. This is the sort of thing I'm looking for. Right, OK. Um, like sort that. of jaded, <coughs> right. worn country house pieces is what I really like. Well, these are the sort of things that I'm, I... Right now, I'm definitely not sure about whether I'm okay. going to sell. I mean, it, once we've got everything ready, we'll put everything back together. Yeah. And then there may be... We'll go, actually, you know, this isn't going to yes, work. Or it's too fragile because we're going to have yeah. public in here. Or... Yeah. With Anselm unwilling to part with Drew's favourite items in the hall, they move upstairs to try another room. Oh, wow, look at that. So, uh, what's this room? Another bedroom or what, what is this? This will be a bedroom, yeah. Um, this is called the North Room. OK. Um, a few bits. Um, I tell you what, I do like this. I do like the sofa. Um, Indeed. What are your plans for that? Um, I, I mean, <laughs> if I could afford to upholster it, I probably would, but. I'd probably can't, so it, it's it's more likely. Ah, good. OK. Um, 
this I do like the look of. They are, I've reupholstered one of this model before, and it's nosebleed expensive. Yeah. For, it's sort of 1,500 quid plus the materials. Brilliant. Underneath this, I have to say, is a pretty fine sofa. Underneath really, okay. this, Underneath this mess. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's not bad at all. I've got these very unusual things here. I think they're called pochettes, I think. It may look tatty, but this sofa is a rare find. Made at the turn of the 20th century by the famous manufacturers Howard and Sons of London, their furniture is held in the Victoria and Albert Museum and the Queen's private collections. Restored, this piece is worth about £3,500. I mean, even in this state, mm. uh, it's worth £700. Really? Yeah. So I'd like to buy okay. it for about £500. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, well... I've... I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it is what it is. It is what it it's is. It's a great sofa, yeah. but it's in a hell of a state. It's a hell of a state. So really? what, what do you think? Could be interested. Yeah? Um, How can I tempt I might, you? I might, you know, meet you halfway, but I'd need to... Um, I just need to... We've got our own kind of valuations of things, so I'd probably just check and see, okay. see, what, right. see what the uh, see what they insurance say. valuation is. Let's I mean, I know insurance valuations, obviously, yeah. more than sale valuation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> but, um, OK, I'm sure we could... Yeah, you know, we'll come together on something, I'm sure. Yeah. If we're able to buy that piece today, that is the profit for the whole day in one piece. Um, uh, and, and I've got three people I can sell it to straight away. With the deal on hold, it's onto a room piled high with furniture from parts of the house that are being renovated. This is kind of furniture suppository, suppository, depository. Um, uh, so there's loads of stuff under wow. there. That's a pile of furniture. Hello, mate. It's like a huge antique dealer's sort of Christmas present wrapped up in a room for me. Ah, ooh. 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 Oh, great. Cracking table. That's fab, like that, like that. Another one of these little bookcases there. Unfortunately for Drew, Anselm isn't ready to part with any of the family history yet. Oh, it's kind of slightly unfair, because I took Drew up to the porch room and revealed, um, like, a huge pile of furniture and um, said he couldn't buy any of it. Oh, this is, this is, this is terrible. It's like <laughs> <laughs> being taunted. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, look at that. If I could buy things, I'd have spent thousands by now, um, happily. I would just get the checkbook out and start writing checks because I would be more than happy to buy as much of this furniture as I possibly could. Wait, come, back, come, back come back, come back in yeah. sort of six weeks. Yeah, OK. You know. For the trip to make a financial return, Drew has to convince Anselm to part with something. Drew, let me show you the dining room. There's, I mean, there's a few bits in here. Um, OK. It's mainly paintings, actually, which we store, but... Um, ah, OK. Lots of things, again. Lots of things we need to... Yeah, just... just, just, just right, I thought enough. I'd just show you. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, see yeah. if you've... The, um... Taunting. Taunting the, the, the table exactly. would be of interest, of course. Yeah. Um, it's a lovely table, it's, isn't it's, it? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Great top, look at that. Come out with timber there, lovely. Yeah. OK. Thank you. OK, this is the family chairs. Family These crest. are all the fa family crests, yeah. Are they what I think they are? I think they might be, yeah. What do you think they are? Chippendale. They are Chippendales. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at... How many have you got? I think there's about 16. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Price of a small family home. <laughs> <laughs> how yeah, much do you want, then, do you? Um, uh, uh, you could buy a very nice car. Uh, okay. <laughs> very nice car. A very nice car. Um, you could buy. Yeah, I thought they were when I when I saw yeah, them. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're they are really nice, and um, I mean we do occasionally do use them, but um, we've got some others made which we would normally use. Mm. Yeah, because are... these are too precious, really, I suppose. Yeah, but it's you you know I think you've got to use these things, otherwise you know you've just got to use mm. them in the right place. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I walked into a house two years ago, and there was a dog sat on a chair. Ah. And I said, do you know what that chair is? He goes, oh, no, it's just some old chair. And uh, I went through to the other room and they had five more and there was two planks between one and they were painting the walls. <laughs> and they were early really? Chinese Chippendale. Oh, really? Yeah, all of them. Worth a fortune. Worth about a quarter of a million pounds. 
kid, God. <laughs> yeah, and I had to tell them. I couldn't, you know, I had to tell them. I probably could have bought them, but yeah. I had to tell them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Anyway, so nothing more in here for me. No. Um, let's uh, see no, where else we can have a look. Future possibilities, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's I'll all... show you that we've, yeah. the, okay. we've got a kitchen, it's all Victorian kitchen with loads of stuff, so... Yeah. <laughs> and this, yeah, this is the newest part of the house. It's built in about 1870. Um... Aha. Uh, yeah. More furniture. Oh. In the jumble, Drew finds another item. What have you found? It's a chair by R. Dawes, D A W E S, mahogany library chair. It's not so, not its best work, but it's not bad. It's got an interesting shape. So, what about this one? I think it's again. That's probably a. Um, it's, a it's, it's a less likely, but I'd like to take just think on it. Rejected again. Drew's hopes now rest on one item upstairs. The sofa, have you managed to have any thoughts on that or valuations? Um... Drew and T are in Gloucestershire at an historic country house with amazing furniture. That's fab, like that, like that. Another one of these little bookcases there. But none of it's for sale. Oh, this is, this is, this is terrible. It's like <laughs> it's been, been taunted. Except possibly this one sofa. The sofa, have you managed to have any thoughts on that or valuations on that one? Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'd be up for selling that to you. So wh what, what do you want to end up Well, on I on thought um, 600 quid. 600 quid? We'll have a deal. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Lovely. Yeah, well, Thank you. That. Don't look forward to getting it down the stairs. Yes. Down the stairs. <laughs> Today, fantastic. Great day. Bought something I absolutely love. Met a really good guy put a wish list together of things that would keep my business going for a month if I bought them all, and potentially got a very good customer. And it's a beautiful house, too. Love this, like stepping off a yacht. Right, we're done. Thank you well, very much. Thank you, Drew. Pleasure. Lovely to meet you. And you, and you, and you. Come again when, we're, when we have a party. I'll come for a party. Yeah, exactly. Please. Yeah, yeah I'd like that. that, I'd like that. I can make Thank as much noise as possible. Today. Yeah, lovely to meet you. And uh, good Charles. luck with it. It's uh, super. I'm Thank sure it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm so, so, uh, Yeah, I think it will be. <laughs> Good luck. Thank See you. you. Cheers, it was really good to um, have Drew here because um, he was really impressed by everything and um, we sold something. I've got a little bit of money to help pay for all the building works. So, yeah, please, good day, happy days. That is going to be the ultimate party destination. Definitely. Isn't it? Yeah. That's got Great. everything. It's got that old world glamour. It's cool, the rooms are nice. There's going to be some yeah. great parties there. Are we going to any? I'm, I'm going to some, yes. Are you? Yeah, no. you're not. You're okay. busy. You've got work to do. I'm going to sleep in the van, have I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can come, you can come pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly kind of you. Before anyone does any partying, Drew and T have another stop to make. The next day, they travel two hours north, past Birmingham, to the village of Barwell in Leicestershire. They're knee-deep in farm country. We're in Leicestershire to see a guy called Dale, and uh, he's got a place called Inglenook Farm. And he buys and sells um, sort of horse equipment and tack, and they do livery and Oh, you do tack as well. I, do, I, do, I don't do tack. <laughs> I do top-class antiques, actually. Sorry, that's, yeah. what, that's what he's thinking of, isn't it? Yeah. And he's asked us to come down and have a look. I sent Drew uh, email and a couple of pictures of bits and pieces I thought he might be interested in. And he said, yeah, he'd like to visit and have a look. Farms, because of their sort of nature, they're massive and they've got loads of outbuildings and sheds, always a good hunting ground. And they tend to stay in the same family for a while, don't exactly, they? Yeah, so exactly, yeah, they don't. Try. And if they're anything like Welsh farmers, they never really sell anything either. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like the place. This looks like farm buildings. Oh, they've got a donkey. Oh, my favourite animals in the whole world. I love donkeys. I bet they love you too. No, they do. I love them. They're the most intelligent animals. Dale? How are you doing? How are you? Drew? How are you? Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Same here. You're all right, mate. Oh, horses. Hello, 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 hello. It's a great place you've got here. We're here after your call, really, because I remember you sent me a picture of, um 
uh, a wrought iron bench. And a yeah, couple park of bench and park a couple bench. of bits and pieces. Yeah, so we thought we'd yeah. um, pop down. Oh, that's young. When did it, when did that one arrive? It's about a week old. A week. So what do you do? Do you sell them sell them afterwards? The to wife, you? I don't. She keeps breeding them, and we got a couple in Ireland that someone jumps for us and. No. Ah, this is what you rang me about initially, wasn't it? Yeah. This old, it's an old park bench. There's one slap missing, but it's there on. It's just dangling on it. Where is it? The, the, the top one? Yeah, the top rail here. missing? No, it's here. Ah, OK. It's all complete. It's just two of the rivets are gone. Ah, well, that makes it a bit different, really, having, having that. Can we get that out, do you think? Yeah, it's only jammed it's wedged in. Wedged in. Watch your fingers. You out the way? Yeah, go on. There we go. It's all there, it just wants riveting. So it just needs. Can you hold that end up there? It'll yeah. be on the front of that. Just put it there, like that. Put it on the front. Should, does, have you got the rivet? There you go. Yeah. Can you hold that there for a second, yeah. see? Just see what it looks like. It's not bad shape, actually, is it? You're talking about me there? Oh, you're in terrible. <laughs> you're in a terrible state, you are. If I was coming to buy you, I wouldn't be spending any money today. Away. You need a bigger van. <laughs> I need a bigger van. <laughs> I quite like the sort of beaten upness of yeah. it. You know, the sort of bend in it, I quite like. This wrought iron bench was made in the late 19th century. The worn, slatted metal is appealing, but it's had some dodgy repair work. With considerable restoration, it's worth about £650. The bench, nice, but whenever you're offered something, you must look at it properly. And the entire right front leg had been changed. The back rear leg had had a repair. The right arm had had a repair. There were several rivets broken in the mid section of the seat, plus it was bent. There was a stretcher missing. The top rail was missing. So the right hand arm that had been completely replaced, and both back legs had been re both back and front legs had been replaced. What do you want for it? Yeah, what do I want for it? Yeah. Right, 250. No, too much. Um, in good nick, yes. Well, how would you say it? It's tops. To be honest, in that nick, 100 quid. And that's yeah. absolute no, tops. I couldn't take that for you. The, the, the state yeah. it's in, I've got I to get into I understand that. You've got to put a man on it and. I'll get a nice nick with all that repaired. I'll get four and a half, including the vat and everything. Yes. Yeah. I know it's going to cost me three or 400 quid to get it right. There's still profit in it after that, though, because it's a very, very good shape. Um, but I can't pay 250. It's a shame. The day might yet be saved. There's still a trailer full of furniture to see. Ah, OK. Good luck in here. Thanks, T. You, know, you always say get right to the back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bit of a mission today. I'm about to get my hands out of my pockets and everything. Spotted something, Drew? No. Nothing. It's difficult because there's like four layers of furniture. Yeah. You're just trying to look through all of it at once without breaking anything as well. Tricky. It's all sort of fairly normal, just household furniture. Nothing in there for me. No, to be honest with you. The trip is looking to be a waste of time unless Drew can find something in the last two sheds. No. Unless you want a camper van, too. No. OK, so this one here as well. You never know. So what did... Um, where's all this lot ended up from, then? Oh, it's just stuff I've collected over the years. No, nothing in here. So where should we... Um... Oh, some calves. So calves, they are, too. Not cows. I calves. said calves. Calves. Um, I've just bought and sold one of these, actually. What is it? It's a tack hanger. Looks like you're using that. No. You're not using no. that? No. All right, OK. I've just um, bought and sold exactly the same one. With that same mechanism like that, that yeah. same drop. I bought some old horse harness of a week and... That came with it? They were all hanging there. I didn't realise it adjusted like it didn't. But, like, the, all the old harness and that was absolutely rotten. Yeah. In the 19th century, this steel hook with rifle bolt fitting held horse tack. Today, it could be used as a novel pot holder in a kitchen or coat rack in a shop. With a quick clean, it's worth about £60. So if you've just bought it, how much is it going to cost me? I don't know. 
Drew and T are visiting a horse farm in Leicestershire. Have you spotted something, Drew? No. So far, Drew has found nothing to buy. Looks like you're using that. No. You're not using no. that? No. Unless he can close a deal on this tack hook. So if you've just bought it, how much is it going to cost me? I don't know. 40 quid. 40 quid? 40 quid, 40 quid, 40 quid. What did I sell the last one for? I got 60 quid for the last one, cleaned. So, 30 quid. Go on, then, it's yours. Thank you very much. We'll have that. Best case scenario today, I'll make 30, 40 quid profit, maybe, out of it. Uh, not enough to pay the diesel, to be honest. But this is the nature of my job. Um, you can go to a lot of houses, farm sales, auctions, demolition sites, you name it, and walk away with nothing. But I have to go to everyone. It's what I do. Unfortunately, today hasn't worked out. That is the way it is. It can't always be full of gold, can it? No, nothing there for us today. That's the way it goes, so let's just move on. Let's just move on. It's a light load on this trip home to Conway. But Drew is keen to show Rebecca his one big find from Elmore Court. Back! Hello, 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 hello. How are you doing? All right. That's a bit special. There. Get off. <laughs> what do you think? Is it what I think it is? Yes. Is it a Howard? Yes. It's, a, it's in terrible nick, though. It's completely gone. There's nothing left. No, They're actually it? sticking out the bottom. But it's a Howard. Yeah. Fab. It's fab, isn't it? I yeah. mean, even though it's gone, it's just special to sit in. Yeah, yeah. Great. Really oh, that's, that is a gem. So, uh, sell it as it is or restore it. Restore it, two grand. Money least, out. Yes. At least, to get that done properly and professionally and right. Or knock it down the road as it is. What would you rather? Knock it down the road as it I is. I thought you might. <laughs> <laughs> Only one sofa. That doesn't matter. It's quality this time, not quantity. Drew always wants to be one step ahead of other antique dealers. So his next trip is to untapped territory. It's a five-hour trek south from Conwy to the hamlet of Bolvento near Launceston in Cornwall. Surrounded by 300 miles of coastline, Cornwall is best known as a seaside holiday spot, but it also has a long history of smugglers and pirates. We're going to see a pirate place. Are we? Arr. <laughs> That's how you talk when you're down here. Arr. Arr. We're off to see Jamaica Inn. Hello, nice. Set amidst the eerie landscape of Bodmin Moor, Jamaica Inn was built in 1750 as a resting place for weary travellers. Its remote location made it a favourite for smugglers and ghost stories and the inn's fame grew after the famous author, Daphne du Maurier, wrote a novel of the same name. Today, it houses a museum and is run by Kevin Moore. We've invited Drew down. We think um, we have some items that would be very interesting to him. Old chairs, tables, and all sorts of artifacts. I think he'll have a fun day. Here we go. This is the place. Uh, are we be docking? Uh, they'll be having rum. Arr! i tell you, what, I can't keep this up all day. No, it's, gonna, oh. it's hurting, isn't oh. it? Oh, playing havoc with your chest. Right then. Kevin? Hi, Drew. Drew. Oh, hi, hi. 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 Nice to meet you. you Welcome yeah. to Jamaica Inn um, on Sunny Bodman Moor. <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. sunny today. <laughs> no, it's a bit misty out there. Yeah, yeah, just a bit. I don't think it's bit. witchcraft when the sun comes out. <laughs> <laughs> it's ideal in smuggling weather, actually, isn't it, yeah. really? Perfect. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Anyway, it's a wonderful old build. I love all the, the paper money stuck around there. OK, well, we're here to see uh, the museum. Yeah, of course. Wouldn't mind having a skim around the pub Absolutely. later on. No problem but at can all. we have a look at the museum now? Of course, no problem yeah. at all. Follow me. Any coaching in, pub, hotel, guest house, b, &B you name it, they have one thing, high turnover of furniture. And they tend to just throw them in a shed and forget about them and buy something else. That's why these are always worth coming to. Ah, so, this is the museum. This is um, our Daphne de Maurier collection. Yeah. We actually have her writing desk here. Do you? So, everything in here, is this all Daphne de Maurier's 
personal fact. Yeah, absolutely. Even down to the cigarettes and the foxes. Absolutely. Mints. Are we able to go in there and have a look? Absolutely. So, no okay, where do we? I'm right to just go through. Yeah, please do. Well, there's a display on the floor here, too. It's a. Uh... Wow. Look at the desk. It's great. I'm glad you've left it unrestored as well. Really? Just, oh, I think that was definitely the way to go. If you'd have restored it, I think you'd have taken some of the sort of heart out of it, really. Right. To be perfectly honest with you. But I'd love it. You've got her cigarettes and everything. Yeah. This place has got a lot of things going for it. There's the fact that Daphne du Maurier wrote Jamaica in here. That would have brought in a considerable amount of money in the day, and they would have spent that on lots of furniture. The two bits that I like the look of are these. Right. You've got two of them there. They're not matching. OK. Am I right to move them? Yeah, of course you. Sure. Yeah. These are late 19th century Scottish bobbin chairs. Right. So they've had quite a trip yeah. down here. So, I don't know, it's... Uh, they're worth quite a bit of money to me. Really? Yeah. They've got a certain something that I quite like. I mean, is there a possibility they're for sale? Um... I, I don't think so, Drew, and the no. reason I say that is it's part of the collection. I think it would be wrong for me to, to okay. sell anything from this room. Sure. Can I just throw an offer at you? Of course you can. For the pair? Yeah. A thousand pounds? No. No? Sorry. Mm, Fourteen hundred. Sorry, they're that's not, it. They're, they're just not, not for sale. They're not for sale. Just not for sale. We've got other things we can look at. Okay, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I like this type of chair. It's yeah, I, I can, really buy. I I've just that. bought one. Really? I've just bought one. Yeah, so I'm just thinking I can make up a collection. Right. You see his little face now. He's got it. <laughs> really wanted. <laughs> I haven't got it. They don't turn up very often, and to find two, particularly one that's quite a nice one, yeah, is uh, is a shame. But I completely respect what you're saying. So that's absolutely. That's... it's not fine, but OK. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look around the rest of the museum. OK, let's go. Being able to buy those today would have been make the trip down here well worth... well worth it. If I'd had to drive all the way to Cornwall, buy those two chairs and drive back, it would have paid off. Furniture with an impressive provenance could be just what Drew's after. Kevin leads him to the guest rooms, which are set to be haunted. We're going upstairs. Hang on, what about this? Can I have a look at this down this here, Kevin? Oh, yeah, of course you can. The little settle there? Yeah. That's quite... It's in a terrible state, but it's quite cute, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, what's what's the deal with this, then? Where did this... Is this part of the, the pub from years, or is it just something you've just got hold of? Yeah, I think... I think this was probably one of the original settles that was at the inn when we bought it in 1973. Yeah, it's earlier than that, that's for sure. Good. <laughs> it's quite a lot earlier than that. This style of high-backed bench, called a settle, was standard furniture in inns and taverns as far back as the 15th century. This pine settle dates to the late 18th century and could fetch around £700. It's a bit wonky, isn't it? It's a bit... It's had quite a lot hacked out of the bottom of it, but it's still got something about it. It's just your height as well, Drew. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's even sitable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Um... It's n it's not a big money piece, to be okay. honest with you. Um, it's worth, uh, to me, £300. Right. Three, three, £350 pounds okay. is, is way more than enough for it, actually. Okay. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't be any more than that. That's, that's a very, very substantial bid for this thing, to be honest. That's that would, pretty fair. Is that fair? Yeah. Is that a sale? Yeah. <gasps> there you go, we'll have that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, great. We bought something. You know, that is top money for that in that condition, considering it needs money spending on it. I think I can get 550. I've got 50 quid to spend. There's 150 pound in it, not including my time. Tight, but the ball's rolling. Right, follow me, please. Drew needs to find more profitable <laughs> items to purchase, so they carry on upstairs to the ghost ridden guest rooms. Okay, so what's this? Room three. Okay, room three. Francis Davy. One of the haunted rooms. Is it? I think probably the best thing for me to do. Yeah. Just leave you here and see if you can feel anything. <laughs> How so long does it usually take? Well, it depends. But I'm let's not doing it. I'm not overnight with him. All right. <laughs> we'll do top and tail. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave you to it, all okay. right? Okay. Yeah. 
you feeling the spirits rising in you? No. At least you've got one nice bit of old furniture. So you're supposed to be looking for ghosts and you're looking at his old chest. Yeah. Dead people's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the only sort of weird spirit in there was tea. All right, come on, let's okay. go. I'm not getting it. All right. With no ghosts and only one small item bought, the trip is in danger of becoming a financial disaster. It's taken us nearly seven hours to get down here. Um, we've got to make it pay. We've got to buy more. This looks, this looks more like it. Ah, so this is overspill. It's yeah. natural habitat. This feels better. Does it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing a couple of things already. Oh, good. There's um, something over here like the look of. Ugh. I got another big settle. Yeah. That one's not so clever. That's quite a decent one, isn't it? Yeah, that's oh, you good. Got two. Yeah. One settle, fine. Three settles altogether. Now we're in business. Now we're making money. But what all of a sudden I've got in front of me is a collection. There's one issue with it, which is these backboards here. All these backboards have been replaced. See how ancient and sort of basic the base is, and then how uniform and perfect this top is, which is a hell of a shame. Mm. Can I just have a look at the other one as well? Of course you can, yeah. Has that one got the cupboards in the base? I'm, I'm not sure, Drew, to be honest. Oh, you... you go the other way, you get a bit light. Can I just have a look at the back? It's had some replacement boards on the base, but not bad. OK. Not bad at all. OK, so what's this one going to cost me, considering I paid way too much for the other one? Well, I think, as before, Drew, I think you should make an offer. I've been making offers all day. Have got... <laughs> <laughs> Can you not give us a clue? <laughs> Those ladies weren't impressed, though. <laughs> what, 7 50 Oh, no. <laughs> How much do you think I'm going to get for it? You're probably going to get about 1600 for it. No. No, I've just sold the best one I ever had for 1600 yeah, right. and it knocked spots off this one. Right, okay. It was also twice the size in original paint. Right. Really, really nice. Okay. This one's all right, but it's a bit work a day. The only yeah. thing I don't like about it is this sort of edging they put on the seat there. Right. Apart from that, it's 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 all good. I'm, I, to be honest, I'm at a similar price to the other one. I'm at sort of 350 Okay. To be honest with you. This one, a bit disappointed in the backboards on that. It's a bit of a shame. Right. Um, and I'd say... Two fifty. Okay. So what's that? Six hundred quid. Mm. So six hundred for these, three hundred and fifty for the other one, nine hundred fifty for three. I I'm happy to accept that. You happy with that? Yeah. Good. Well pleased with that. Lovely. Uh, today I managed to walk away with three good original settles, and the best thing about it is I have perfect provenance. Each one of those is from the Jamaica Inn. That is really going to help. That's a nice thing to know. Kevin, thank you. Great having you here. No, thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Cheers. So a good day's by it? we're on our way back. No. There's more, there's more to do down here in Cornwall. We're not coming this way, just for one call. Right. Make sure we see a lot of things. I want that van rammed. <laughs> rammed full of gear. Stuff bursting out the side. Bursting out the side. I want it in the front with us. That's a good day <laughs> shopping. Honestly, you cannot move. The next day, they drive 30 miles south to the town of St Austell, near the sea. The stunning stretch of coastline is known as the Cornish Riviera. We are going to see a guy while we're down here um, called Neil, who runs Eden Reclamation. And it's, uh, it sounds like a good call, to be honest with you, it's sort of old school salvage yard. Eden Reclamation is one of the largest architectural salvage yards in Cornwall. But its location means that not many dealers find their way here. Yeah, I've invited Drew down today. We've got a great variety of stuff. Anything from small antiques up to massive two-ton granite lumps. I'd be disappointed if he doesn't leave with a van full. 
I think these yards are very, very much about just getting lucky, and this one is one of those. Oh, here you go. Eden Reclamation. Love the bath on top of the phone box. <laughs> that is good. How are you talking? Hello? Oh, Neil? Ah. Yep. Drew, how are you doing? Good to nice see to you. Nice to meet you. Hi there. Good to see you. How are you? Nice to meet yeah. you. What a brilliant yard. Thank you. It's fantastic. So we all right to have a look around? Yeah, no problem. Give us a tour. Tall. <laughs> no guide, I'm afraid. <laughs> First impressions, top yard. Like it. It doesn't take long to accumulate a lot of stuff, does it? No, not at all. It's a bit overgrown, it's a bit mad. It's a bit mental, really. And that I like a lot. I, I like the randomness of this yard as well. Yeah, I don't like saying to no to stuff, and it does get I a bit... can tell you don't like saying no to stuff. <laughs> get a bit <laughs> crammed up. <laughs> Despite the clutter, Neil knows where everything is. First, he shows Drew an old trailer stuffed with odds and ends. These benches in here, see these red swing-back benches? Yeah. Where do you get those from? Where do they come from? Why are they that colour? Chapel ones. That was the original... Well, that's how they came to me in that colour. Strange. How many of this... We've got three of those swing-back ones. These pine chapel benches were made in the mid-19th century and have kept their original colour and clean functional lines. As a set, they'll fetch about £650. How much are they? £100 a piece. There's three there. Difficult to see how what sort of size they are. I can't do 100 I, I mean... Can we do, um... 200 for the three. 80 pound a piece. Well, so you're about what 240. Can we um, can we pull them out? Yeah. Is that yeah. all right? Are they all yeah. the same length? As far as I remember, yeah. Watch your fingers. It's missing the missing its foot, unless you've got the foot in there for it. Must have left it beyond it. That's a nicer one. I prefer that one. I made a rookie mistake. I started to do a deal on them before getting them all out. Stupid. What I should have done is got them out and done the deal. Rookie mistake. Drew and T are in Cornwall at Eden Reclamation, a large and off-the-beaten-track salvage yard. It doesn't take long to accumulate a lot of stuff, does it? No, not at all. Drew's made an offer on these chapel benches. 200 for the three. 80 pound a piece. Well, so you're about, what, 240? But he's also made a huge mistake. Missing, the, missing its foot. I started to do a deal on them before getting them all out. Stupid. The best one, which was the smallest one, which is a bit chunkier than the rest, is missing part of its foot. Actually, I think you're lucky I bid 200 quid, actually. I'm not going to pay any more. I think just with that... I did, I'm being honest, I didn't realise that, so I think that's only fair. So, do you want to do a deal at that? Uh. We'll have them for 200 pounds. Yeah, that's fine. They're quite a sort of normal thing. There's a lot of them around, but I just like the colour. It's good. Nice old worn paint. I have to, as well, to be honest with you, just spotted this. That's a beast of a thing, isn't it? Yep. It's quite a lump. This early 20th century butcher's block is a rare size, but it's a bit low and would need new feet to raise it to a functional height. Restored, it could sell for about £700. Fantastic wear on it, you know? Years that's taken to do that. Wonderful base, big double-ended drawers, just got a great look to it, a superb look. How much is this? Unrestored, 200 quid as it is. Very, very active woodwork. That's free. <laughs> I'm taking a bit of a chance on that. It's just three pets to a new home. Yeah. Um, 150. Just the worm in it. I think that's what I gave for it. I haven't yeah. got a very good memory, but I think that's what I gave for it. OK. Um, OK. All right, I'll give you a profit on that. All right, £200. Pounds. You have to take it. Yeah, that's right, no, that's fine. That's fine. When it's dealer to dealer, pay him his profit. Let's give him his profit. It's fine for all. We all need each other. We have to work together. With two excellent finds under his belt, Drew moves on to another part of the yard, 
and in no time, he spots something he likes. That's odd, isn't it? Yeah, it's sort of kind of funky-looking little thing, isn't it? I like that. Looks like you've had it a while. No! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, you have. <laughs> it was right till you wobbled it. <laughs> Not sure how old it is, actually. It's got a look, though, hasn't it? This hardwood bench came from a local park and dates to the 1950s. The cast iron frame is an appealing modernist shape, but it's a bit rickety. Restored, it's worth around 400 pounds. Quite funky, how much is it? 120. 120. Um, that's another one. You just got the one? Yeah, just one on its own. 100 quid by it? Mm. Uh, go on, 120. Go on. Like, yeah. There you go. Today's turning out to be a belter. Um, totally unexpected. You know, we're in the middle of nowhere, right down on the south coast, and um, turning up pieces that are really interesting. That's why you should always come to these salvage yards. You go through there? Yeah, you can go through that way. How long have you had that? That's got to be four years. Four years? That's been out yes. here for four years. But antiques go up, so I'm not too worried. I have to be honest, I just couldn't believe my eyes. It's a superb cast iron insert uh, designed by Thomas Jekyll, made by, I think it was Barnard Bishops and Barnards. Just an absolutely achingly beautiful and fabulous designed uh, piece of aesthetic movement fireplace furniture. Absolutely superb. Love it. Whatever that's going to cost me, I'm taking it home. Thomas Jekyll was acclaimed for his Asian-inspired ornamental ironwork, featuring bird and floral motifs. In the 19th century, his work was considered highly innovative and highlighted at major international exhibitions. Today, this fireplace insert is worth 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Uh, what do you want for it? Being it's in an old way in the way. And it's in a, yeah, and it's a state. 75 quid. 75 quid, sold. Thought you might. Thank you very much. Oh, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't know what it is, and that's always difficult. But, you know, when it comes down to it, it it's dealer to dealer, and a bit of knowledge can go a long way. So when he says 75 pound, you know, I'd buy it. If he turned around and said it was 400 pound, I'd have bought it. I think I've made a mistake on that, because I didn't see the potential in that. But then, that's the beauty of the job. You can't know everything. I've had a fantastic day here. I've bought stuff that's got real profit in it, and I've got that incredibly rare insert as well. I think that'll go in the Drew Pritchard collection, that one. It's just too nice. Love it. Absolutely fab. Generally, it was a, a good day. Um, made a few quid. Might make it to the pub tonight. All done? Yeah. Right, Neil, we're finished. Thanks, man. Tea looks finished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, look, look. Poor lads. Got a bead. Yeah, I don't sweat, you see. <laughs> Doesn't do any work, that's right. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that was brilliant. It's just, oh. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, go to the out-of-the-way out places. Yeah. Go to the place that maybe not many people go to and you might find some bargains, you never know. So, you know, Cornwall's worked out well. Practically filled the van. Are we going home, then? Uh, yeah, Cornwall's been good, but let's get back up north and get this lot sold. The next day, back in Conway, the weary travellers have their work cut out for them emptying the van. Gav! Give us hands. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Let's come back to me. Oh, you need definitely a hand. <laughs> grab hold of the others. Grab hold of this side. I'll pull the trolley out. One, two. Fingers. Wow, that's seen some use, hasn't that's it? Seen some use. It's quite low. Uh, butcher's table, uh, they're really trendy at the moment. And they sort of have been for a while, actually. As a statement piece, fantastic. 
Another odd one. Fab colour. Yeah. Isn't that strange? Yes. Look at the... Uh, it needs... Uh, Try it it's, it's well, the, the, all the uh, ends are rotten, so what you're going to have to do, Gav, is take the whole thing apart, yeah. cut the ends, put it back together again. You could be able to leave it in one. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know. Cast iron. No. I love that. Good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really... Different. Different. Yeah. Nice Stylish, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. That's what I thought. You can see it somewhere else. You could paint it. We could mess about with it more and paint it, but I think, no, leave it as it is. Mm. Settle down. <laughs> Very, very nice. Three of. Um, did you make it in? No, we got the call to go down there. Yeah. Um, oh. This one's been cut down. It's been battered, yeah. but it's still original paint. It's. Yeah, but it's all right. You know, it's okay. Wait till you see the other two, though. I think these are original to the first incarnation of Jamaica, Jamaica Inn. Inn. What provenance? Is that heavy, all? Yeah. All right. You're so big and strong, you two. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? I like the seat on that. How good's that? Oh. Isn't that... Look at that timber. What a find. Three settles. Absolutely... They're stunning, actually. The age of them. You can just imagine the old sailors sitting there, smoking their pipes, drinking rum. Dick Turpin sat on this one. Did he? Yeah. Dick Turpin was here. <laughs> he couldn't spell either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does it say that? <laughs> it says it there. Dick Turpin was here. Was W-O-Z. Was, was here. In the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> Written in Byron. Yeah. You can't spell it.